for something as complicated as the brain and as mysterious as mental illnesses to have hopes of designing precise and specific therapies uh, you need understanding you need deep understanding and that's true no matter what the therapy looks like whether it's a medicine or a talk therapy or a brain stimulation treatment and what we're already seeing is that this is happening that the insights from optogenetics have already helped guide brain stimulation therapies whether with deep brain electrode stimulation or with external transcranial magnetic stimulation and the possibilities uh, we think will continue to grow from there even though the main goal of optogenetics is basic science and discovery and understanding its influence can extend uh, across different kinds of treatment It is conceivable uh, that optogenetics could be uh, even used directly, uh, although, as I mentioned, uh, that's by no means the main purpose of optogenetics, which is really a basic science uh, discovery uh, approach. Uh, but the key components of uh, optogenetics are, uh, and this is one of the things that's made it relatively easy to adapt and to, to disseminate, uh, the basic components are relatively straightforward and not too different from things that are already done uh, with human beings. Uh, but as I said, that's uh, uh, not the main purpose of optogenetics. Using optogenetics, people have discovered pathways in the brain and phenomena that were surprising uh, and that people didn't know were there. Uh, for example, it's been found that buried deep within the amygdala, a part of the brain that's normally associated with fear and anxiety, that deep within it is a pathway that's uh, anti-anxiety, that if you selectively drive this pathway, you can have uh, what we call an anxiolytic effect. And so this is something that could only be resolved with optogenetics with the precision that uh, it gave us to uh, exert specific control over one connection from one uh, part of the structure to another. Uh, this is showing up in all kinds of different settings. For example, we're finding that so small shifts in excitability of one part of the brain uh, can effectively change how other parts of the brain relate to each other. And so this is a sort of a complex second-order dynamical effect uh, that we can detect with optogenetics. Uh, in terms of thinking about a map, which we'd all love to have, the uh, question is what kind of information do you want from the map? And uh, it's nice to see uh, roads and paths, but it's also nice to know a lot more about those roads and paths, uh, who's using them, uh, and uh, what kind of traffic is there along that path at different times and which traffic matters and which traffic doesn't. And all these things would give you a rich, deep understanding of a map. And absolutely, optogenetics is a big part of that effort to understand uh, what each path way that we can detect by any means, what its uh, causal implications are, what it means uh, for behavior or for cognition. Well, there are two ways to look at those questions about uh, moods and personality and, and thoughts. There's the subjective feeling that one has when all those things happen, and then there's the external uh, uh, manifestations of those, behavior. Uh, and of course, we can never know what another person is feeling inside, uh, uh, certainly not an animal, but not even another person. Those things will be very difficult uh, uh, to make headway on. But uh, we are already, uh, and many, many papers have been uh, published on this, uh, we're already using optogenetics, and many labs are, are doing this, to understand what's causing uh, personality trait-like uh, patterns uh, from one individual to another, what affects motivation, the willingness to work hard to overcome a challenge, to look for a reward, uh, the ability to seek out uh, rewarding or pleasurable stimuli, and all these things that uh, affect uh, human personality traits and motivations. 
In uh, my laboratory at the moment, uh, we're using optogenetics alongside other uh, exciting new tools. Uh, we're developing ways to visualize the traffic along those pathways that I've mentioned, even deep inside the brain of freely behaving animals. And we've described some of those methods which we designed to be compatible with optogenetics and will magnify uh, its ex explanatory power for brain dynamics. We've also worked on ways of looking at the structure, the fine wiring of the brain in an intact preparation. And again, this was designed to work well with optogenetics so we can see the paths and not just the traffic, but see the paths themselves and link all those different kinds of data together for deep understanding. Well, I, I certainly hope nothing is ultimate. Uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, it's amazing and thrilling what we can do now, but there's so much more we need to discover and so many more tools and technologies we need to build. Uh, I hope uh, and think they'll be compatible with what we find with optogenetics, uh, but we need uh, uh, so many uh, new ideas to make all the discoveries we'd like to make uh, about the brain and about mental illness. And uh, in a way, this is uh, uh, just the door cracking open a little bit, and uh, it's exciting to see what's going to happen.